Hello and uh, welcome to another video, another process video. So, originally when I was recording this, the the video part, I was just going to record the drawing and then upload that, but I realized I forgot to uh, mute the television screen. So I was watching, um, I was watching a football game and... I figured it wasn't going to be appropriate, so I'm going to do a voiceover. This, uh, this is going to be a drawing of Mr. Freeze from Batman. It's a long video, so put on your headphones and <laughs> go to sleep. So I didn't... It's another one of these doodles where I don't know where I'm going. I just start drawing, start sketching it. So I'm working on a, a little faded table over there. My, because it's the perfect height to put my camera on top of. Starting from left to right, there's a sculpture of Baby Yoda, Grogu. That's, uh, I made about seven or eight casts of that already, and that's the latest one. I'm just playing around with it. I was going to do a drawing of that, but I gave up. Next to that is a clamp. I was using it as a paperweight. Then I have a small rig uh, folding screwdriver set, a smudge stick, an eraser, and a couple of cheap pencils. Okay, back to Mr. Freeze. I'm going by the by the Mike Mignola. Mike Mignola. Ooh, it's hard to say. Design from the Batman animated series. He's got those little red glasses and the uh, sharp nose. I didn't want to do the sharp nose, so I pushed it in a little bit and the bald head he's a little lean I was gonna make it look like uh, like he's leaning back <laughs> I'm showing off the smudge stick there for some reason so this paper I'm drawing on is a pretty good quality Strathmore uh, paper I think it's about 80 pounds so it could take a little bit of uh, water but I've never really tried I've done some inking on this paper and it worked fine so I figure I could paint over it too so I you don't really need to do this stuff that I'm doing right now if you have an idea of what you're drawing I'm just Still trying to find the the structure. Like I knew he was gonna have really aged leathery skin. Cause he shouldn't be smooth, he's he's frozen. So if you've seen that old uh, Batman animated series. I hear they're going to do a reboot or a continuation, so it's a really amazing, amazing cartoon. Like I said, the character, I think, was designed by Mike Mignola, and um, it was voiced by Michael Ansari. Ansara? I think it's Michael Ansara. He was in um he was in Star Trek. I think he played a Klingon. And I know he married Barbara Eden from I Dream of Genie. So that's that's a little tidbit. That's the kinda kinda stuff I think of when I'm doing these drawings.
So this this shading, it's just to help me when I put on the colors later on. It's just uh, it's just like a visual guide. It's not really even necessary. I just want to build some structure. This lead pencil is about 4B. It's a little bit darker than um, than the yellow number two. And I'm being super light. I'm not pressing in at all. And then once I get lazy, I use the smudge stick to just fill it in. I just tone the whole thing. I don't know why I didn't tape the corners down. I was using that paperweight, just being lazy or cheap. This is another cheap Office Depot eraser, I think. It's from like two jobs ago, two offices ago. Thinking if I should uh, make the forehead more prominent, round it off a little bit. So I was thinking if I should make the glasses black or red. I thought black would have looked a little too creepy, like it was just two holes in his head. I mean, he's looking a little like Dr. Venture here. So I'm trying to fix that. I'm trying to make the chin a little more prominent. So he's nerdy, but he's not too nerdy, too dorky. So somewhere along there, I made the neck a little bigger, just built some mass. I think in the cartoon he said he could lift 500 pounds or something. I was trying to figure out how big to make his mouth. In the cartoon, he's more the silent type. And that old Adam West, um, Batman, he had the one-liners. He was more like, you know, Arnold. So it was ice to see you, all that nonsense it's very disrespectful to the fans that movie was horrible i never understood those those movies like what make them what makes those comic book movies successful are the fans and when you rewrite a character, you're thumbing your nose at them. You're thinking you're smarter than they are. And then the movie tanks. I was thinking if I should even draw ears on him when the freezing or the, the frostbite, when it, you know, like, melt off his ears. I did a 3D model a little while back where I just got rid of the nose and part of his lips. Like he was uh, 
like it was decomposing or getting freezer burn. Even with the stronger chin, he's still looking a little like Dr. Venture. I like that fishbowl helmet. It's always fun to look at. At some point, I'm going to make another 3D model and probably print it and paint it. I always like this character. So here's uh, more shading under the chin, just to build the jawline. I didn't use my gum eraser because I figure I'm going to paint over all of this pencil work anyways. So it doesn't need to be too neat. I don't have to be too precise. Also, I only have a little bit of that eraser left and I wanted to use it up. giving him a little more cheekbone. Emphasize the shape of the nose. Like that cartilage in the tip of the nose is going away. Like it's actually freezing off. He shouldn't have any lips, that's for sure. Again, I'm thinking about the ears. It's getting smaller and smaller. It, the costume's going to be super simple. It's just going to be little bits and pieces. Like, uh, if you looked at the, um, the design in the cartoon, it's basically just... You know, he's wearing a swimsuit. Uh, yeah, this is a Windsor Newton Filbert watercolor synthetic brush. I just use it to lay down the uh, colors, flat colors. Uh, I said there's a watercolor video, but it's actually watercolor and gouache. So this, this uh, first layer is just to see how good the paper is. Is it going to accept the paint? And so far so good, no crazy buckling. Oh, you know what? I think it's a... It's a Cotman? So it's a Windsor Newton Cotman brush. That's like their student grade cheap stuff. The watercolors are uh, Windsor Newton designer colors, designer gouache and regular watercolor. It's just like ultramarine and some alizarin crimson. 
a little bit. So usually when I do watercolors, I'll do it on my uh, watercolor blocks. Um, it's no warping, nice and clean. Or I would do them on um, Strathmore four ply matte finish. plate finish paper that's the uh, that's the good stuff where you get lift you can lift up the color after you've painted it and it's super super expensive but really great so you buy a big sheet and then you cut into little pieces and then you do little paintings that's what we used in college and that's what I learned from uh, my watercolor teacher, Erwin Greenberg. Um, a lot of people use that same technique. Um, David Levine, the great caricature artist. He, uh, his watercolors are amazing. He did a lot of stuff with that same technique on that type of paper. You lay down the color and then you can lift it up. So it's not just a, you know, additive process. It's subtractive. And it, it looks amazing. You could really like model stuff. You like that cut? So it dries pretty fast, which is great. I don't need any um, blow dryers or anything to dry the paper. So here's my first test of how the red would look on the glasses. I think it looks pretty cool. Looks like uh, Woody Harrelson in that Natural Born Killers poster. This is a Leonardo. Watercolor brush, I think. Leonardo. A Da Vinci watercolor brush. I got it on sale. There was, um, there's a couple of brands I use. Um, I like those Raphael brushes. I like uh, Isabe. But I didn't want to use too many brushes. I just I didn't want to clean them. Even the watercolors are the easiest to clean. Just shake them up. Use some soap once in a while.
Every time I stop like that, it's because something happened on the TV and I was looking to see what happened. There are some all right games. That's where I made the commitment I was going to make his mouth much bigger. Just establishing the edges right there. I think at this time I was thinking I had to make his body bigger, but I forgot about it. I'll get back to it later. So I th think my version of uh, Mr. Freeze looks more like Michael and Sarah in the cartoon. Just saying. Have you noticed I put tape on the uh, paper? I don't remember how big this watercolor brush is. If you could see on the label, leave a comment. So about there, I figure I can do a little bit of lifting with this paper and it won't, you know, won't rip. So I'll use a cheaper acrylic uh, acrylic brush, synthetic brush, to lift some paint later on. Someone just scored a touchdown. Minimal effort on this costume. Minimal. I keep jumping around because I know uh, once I've mixed a little bit of dark color, I have some other spots in the figure that I want to apply it to. Just to keep it interesting. Keeping a piece of paper on the top to wipe off the wipe off the excess uh, water. I had it too close to my lap. This is a natural um, sable brush. I don't know if they make them anymore. They're very nice, good bounce. Just 
seeing how red I could get it without it being too creepy. This is probably a little too red. So acrylic paints, when they dry, they dry darker, but watercolors usually dry a little lighter. So if you look at it and it looks just right, you should make it a little bit darker. So then when it dries lighter, it'll look just right. See, at this point, you can't see any of that drawing underneath it anymore. Now I'm just sketching with watercolor. Certain parts of the head I want to emphasize. So this stage, I pretty much used the same brush. I don't think I've switched this entire time. Wasn't sure what I was doing with the uh, upper lip area, right, right under the nose. Wanted more texture on his face, like a leathery. Someone scored a touchdown. That's the uh, acrylic brush I was talking about, synthetic brush. It's a nice point, but it's, it's stiffer than the natural hair brushes, so I could use it to lift. Like around the nose, that line is a little too sharp. So I was using that brush to even it out, lift out some of the color and soften the edge.
If I was in a time crunch, I would just scan this right now and take it into Photoshop and just finish it there. Because I've laid down the, uh, the colors, the shape, and I could finish it much faster in Photoshop. But since this is for fun, Is uh, really thin, so doing like that old Bob Ross aligner brush thing where you paint trees and just you know, whistle. Can't be too sketchy with these kind of brushes. Something cool happened. Just adding a little bit of detail again. These kind of things are so much easier to do in the computer. Easy to mass, easy to set guides, round edges. It's just trying to figure out what shapes to do for that shoulder pad. Back to the big brush. That area looked flat, so I wanted to put more color in it, maybe darken a little bit too. I think that was Carmine. Kind of an expensive color. I don't really use it that much. Oh, this part I started adding a little more uh, fleshy color on it. Like he's not completely dead. It shouldn't be totally blue. Should have some uh, some earth tones, some dirt colors. Cerulean blue. And, 
that is ultramarine blue. Thinking if I should just color the whole thing flat, and I did. Watching this back, I was thinking, why didn't I use more Prussian blue? Could have just done Prussian blue and uh, and white. Maybe next time. Still didn't make his arms wider. Yeah, that's the uh, Da Vinci number two, maybe? Or one? Some um, lizard crimson around the edges just to bring it out. He's an old man, he should look like an old man. Ear is getting smaller and smaller. I was thinking I should make bags under the glasses. I wasn't sure if you could see it. So I just made that area a little bit darker with a shadow. The character is supposed to be cold and, you know, without any feeling and emotion. But that wouldn't really make too much sense. He had to be a little bit angry to do what he was doing. So right here, it's trying to make the brow more prominent. Probably a little too angry over here, so I had to tone it back. I'm trying to erase this.
is looking a little too angry. That's more erasing than painting. It's about the dirt layer on the edge. Putting a little blue over the red. Let's tone it down a little bit. Trying to mix some uh, white, see how that would look on the paper. Spoiler alert, did not look good. I ended up painting over it. Just to define the edge a little bit more. Something cool happened on the TV. Finally go back to the ears. Thinking of putting a reflection on there, but that looked a little weird, so we'll get rid of that right away. Look like big bug eyes. I can still kind of see it. It's bugging me. Needed some wrinkles on his forehead. Those are not eyebrows. The cherry on top. So a little wrinkles and little details. 
I always save those for last because if you start doing them in the beginning, it'll take forever. And this is a sketch, so you can only do that for little pieces or it won't be a sketch anymore. Paint in some little Bob Ross veins. It's the second time I brought up Bob Ross. And branches. That's how he paints little branches. Got a little carried away in the cheekbone. That was too dark, so I had to, to color it. See how easy the paint just lifts? I might do more watercolors on this paper. I have a ton of it, so... Decided to put a little shadow over there. Didn't really make sense, but I thought it looked cool. I think I ended up putting a little more red there too. And do some details. If this wasn't a sketch, I would not be doing this freehand. So you gotta warm up, you gotta get ready to do these <laughs> one stroke parts. This one I forgot to load up the brush so it kind of dries. Ooh, that's messy. You know, that helmet would be a pretty cool cosplay about now. It's putting a little more detail. Still didn't make the arms big enough. I'll get to it. I didn't use that many colors on this. Maybe use like four or five colors. That's it. Let's keep the palette limited.
Something cool happened. Yeah, that shoulder pad was bugging me a little bit. I just want to make sure people knew it was a hard object, hard surface. Might use this to uh, do my next 3D model. Tone down that forehead. To the arms, and then that's it.
Thank you for watching. If you've watched the entire video, thank you for staying. And uh, like and subscribe. Smash stuff. Thank you. Later.